I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to become a tech contractor. And specifically, I'm gonna talk about uh, contractors in the technology industry, uh, whether you work with data or you're programming uh, or, or you're doing data science or, or machine learning or any of those kinds of things. Um, many people choose not to become employees and instead they become contractors and uh, it's a very different way of life and for the right people it is definitely the right choice and for some people it is definitely not the right choice. So buckle up, we're going on a ride and we're going to talk about contracting. Okay, so first things first, you know, what is a tech contractor? You know, who are these people and and uh, what is it? You know, um, I think that's sort of one of the questions that is on a lot of people's minds. And uh, a contractor is a person who um, started their own business. In some cases, you don't have to start a business, but in general, you're starting your own business uh, in order to provide uh, these contracting services or to provide data services or programming services or whatever um, to other companies uh, in exchange for money. And uh, you get to do this um, not as an employee, so you take on jobs or gigs or whatever you want to call it, and then you get paid for those according to whatever you know your contract says, and hence it's called contracting. And so uh, contractors basically usually work on specific projects, and then when they're done, uh, the job is done, they get out, and, uh, and they move on to the next one, whereas em employees typically will, you know, they'll stay in uh, as long as they can or as long as the benefits are good for them. Well, what kind of people become contractors? And I think that's a question that is the right question. It's the right question to ask, because if you're thinking about doing it yourself, you definitely need to ask yourself this question. Um, because, you know, people who become contractors or people who start their own businesses, entrepreneurs, um, they typically are a different breed, I guess you would say. Um, most, most of the business owners that I know uh, or people who have become contractors kind of think outside the box and they don't typically fit into all of, all of the things that are needed to be a good employee, but they make excellent contractors um, just because of the way that they are. Typically, these people are uh, more in tune with having a bit more risk in their life. Um, they are definitely not risk averse people um, in general. They do not, they do, you know, they're not risk averse like uh, people who want to, you know, just get that paycheck and just want to have that pension. Um, people who become contractors or start their own business are typically people who are willing to work the long hours for their, you know, for their business to get it going, uh, to achieve things that are sort of like in inside themselves, you know. Uh, most people that become contractors or become business, you know, owning their own business, um, they typically got, have, have a different kind of fire. It's not better or worse, it's just different. And, uh, and that's typically the kind of person who becomes a tech contractor. So I'm gonna come back to this by the end of this video. I'm gonna talk more about, you know, the kind of person specifically for tech contracting, not just general owning, generally owning a business. Um, but also by the end of this video, I'm gonna uh, tell you all the benefits that you can get, including sort of like the amount of money you can make and, and the kind of lifestyle that you can have. And those things are very important. And, uh, but before we get to that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the things that you actually need, you know, in a, in a practical sense in order to um, start your own business uh, and to become a tech contractor. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need, and this really highly depends on where you come from in the world, you know, you're going to need to probably get an incorporation or a corporation, or you're going to have to make a business um, that is not just you. Um, I would highly recommend, you know, in places in the world that you can do this, um, that you start a business 
get it incorporated and uh, there are lots of benefits to having the actual business as opposed to just doing the work yourself and, and, and one of those things has to do with liability um, and separating yourself like your personal self and, and you know your own life uh, from all of the things that can happen and go great or go wrong uh, in in terms of uh, you know doing business with with you know bigger businesses and so um, and it also makes for uh, a much more um, a better way of doing business a more sophisticated way of doing business and it can benefit you in a lot of ways so so get an incorporation and uh, that's an important thing um, you know I think the next thing uh, would be, you know, if you're working with sensitive data and, uh, you know, be honest about what you're trying to do. What's your target market? Who, you know, what kind of tech stuff do you want to do? Um, and, uh, and then create a roadmap for yourself to, to sort of, um, to help you to grow and to, um, to guide your business as, as you go. Um, you're definitely going to need a standardized contract. Um, so during the business planning process, you're going to sort of decide what kind of contracting that you want to do. And what you should do is either talk to a lawyer or find something online if you can't afford that. Um, that's going to be on, on those types of things, including like confidentiality and all those things if the customers don't have that, uh, if they don't have a contract themselves. Um, the other thing would be to get an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement that you can work out between yourself early or per diem or, or by contract basis and so you can probably do your invoicing that way but make sure that you get an On the soft side of things, the, the people part of it, um, you know, you're going to need to develop a thick skin and you're going to need to do it pretty quickly and because as you take on more and more contracts and you do more projects you're going to start to learn that um, you know software projects are definitely not they're not, they never run perfectly um, there's always a lot of pressure involved and uh, depending on the customer um, you know you can have uh, you can either be pulling your hair out or losing sleep or being you know called in the middle of the night and all those kinds of things and so uh, definitely you're going to need to have a thick skin and you need to learn how to negotiate. You're definitely going to need to be a people person and uh, if you if you want to be successful in contracting and to to build up a customer base um, definitely you're, you need to like being around people and working with people and uh, and, and trying to find solutions. Um, typically if you're a win-win personality uh, where you try to look for, you know, solutions that where everybody, you know, wins, uh, then you're going to be more, uh, you, you'll be better at, at running the business and, and operating inside of those projects and getting the results that your customers want. Um, you know, and on the, on that side of the, the, you know, the soft skills, you also need to, you know, you need to understand who has skin in the game and how to react when, you know, uh, things go a little bit wrong or, or if people are acting certain ways, uh, you can't react to them in the same ways as if you were an employee. Um, so you need to really be sort of like savvy to that kind of stuff. And so um, under, having some business savvy uh, is a really good thing to, to have for that. Um, you need to really understand that many software projects, you know, while many of them, they succeed, um, and some of them just in, in fantastic ways, um, many fail. And there are many reasons for failure, um, and, you know, uh, from lack of, of buy-in. You know, you can be doing a project for a department somewhere and, uh, and it's going smoothly, but then the project fails because one level of management above is not in favor of it. You know, and so you need to be able to identify those drivers, um, and and sometimes your pro your software project won't even finish. Um, sometimes they will they will go you know absolutely fantastic, uh, but sometimes they don't. So from there, 
one of the cool things that you can really think about is to understand that, especially when you're doing technology stuff, uh, is that uh, most of the time you're creating something from nothing uh, or something that's never been seen before. And, you know, from an economics perspective, that's a really cool thing because if you've ever taken an elementary economics course, you know that technology shift the supply curve out. And, you know, people think about that stuff and they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, that's, you know, of course that happens or whatever. But when you create something really cool that, you know, you thought of a new way of doing something and you actually see how that works in action, that is very exciting. And that's something that is super cool. And, and I think a lot of people would be drawn to. And so one of the things that you definitely need to learn how to do is to find your customers. So do your marketing, you know, find those contracts, those, those good ones, uh, but also qualifying your customers um, because, you know, you'll get these, you know, you'll get customers that are too small to be able to pay for a tech contractor. Um, uh, and so you need to sort of find out what your, your sort of niche is where do you fit in? And, uh, and so if a customer doesn't meet sort of what you, what you need, whether they're too small or they're too big, you know, because you can definitely have, you know, you can have customers that want to pay you $100 and, you know, they want you to, you know, design a whole software product, uh, which is definitely not going to work. But you might also have a large customer who wants to buy all of your time and they're willing to pay, you know, pretty well for that. Uh, but that's going to turn you into an employee. And so um, definitely uh, finding and qualifying and, and getting your, your target market is very important. So if you do all these things and you become a tech contractor, what are you going to get? Well, um, definitely uh, you're, you're going to see a higher salary than if you were an employee. Um, although it's not going to be a salary, um, you'll you'll be doing you know contracting work and you'll you'll if you're successful you'll bill a lot more um, than you know a typical uh, employee would and you may get your own employees which you can also you know bill out uh, their time for and so if you grow a business based off of that you're going to make a lot more money um, and uh, and that's that's a great thing the downside of it is is that you know there's there's a lot of uh, instability, especially when your business is very young, um, very young business, then, uh, you know, you're going to have to watch your, watch your money. And when you make money, make sure that you save it um, and save it so that you can get through the, you know, the downturns in the business cycle. The other thing that you're going to get is, uh, especially if you are successful and you make a name for yourself, is that you are going to get a very wide and varied experience um, with different companies and people uh, that'll give you insights into how business works uh, that employees will rarely get, especially employees that stay in one, in one sort of role for a very long time. Um, you'll get this sort of like uh, wide range of people that you have contact with and they may range from, you know, uh, people that are, you know, CEOs uh, all the way to like regular people out in the field uh, to crazy and weird people that, you know, you never thought would be very successful and then you find out that, wow, you know, they've got a really interesting take on things. You're also going to use a really wide range of technologies and you'll be pushed to use things because you won't have sort of like somebody looking over your shoulder saying, you know, uh, yes, you can only use this or no, you can, you know, you can only use these things. Um, you're going to be able to, you know, be exposed to a wide range of technologies. And so you're going to use those technologies you can, and you're going to learn sort of like the, uh, the, the benefits and disadvantages of using certain technologies over others. Good example of this is that, you know, uh, database systems for myself, you know, I've used almost every single database system that is available to market today from large systems you know like snowflake or or you know um, data lakes and things like that to you know relational systems i've used you know oracle and sql server and postgres and 
just you know MySQL and, and all that stuff to small databases like uh, you know Microsoft Access or SQLite, um, SQL CE, and some others. Um, so I've I've haven't just looked at those. I've actually used those and implemented every single one of those in solutions before. And so I found that that was very enriching. That I got that sort of wide experience with those. You can work from anywhere. And this is a great thing, especially, you know, despite the, the horrors of the pandemic that happened in 2020 and, uh, you know, continues to be an issue in 2021. Um, working from, from home or working from your own office is a really great thing. Uh, and, and you can work from a beach or you can work from wherever because being a tech contractor, especially in data and programming and things like that, architecture, um, you'll you'll be able to work from wherever you want, and that's a really nice nice uh, life flexibility uh, factor that I think draws a lot of people to um, to being becoming a tech contractor. And one of the other things that I think uh, is really cool is that if you if you build a business, uh, you can contribute back to your communities, and so um, you know a lot of people do this as you know as an employee they'll do this you know through their company uh, projects and all these things uh, that they you know that they're working on but as a as a person who owns your own business um, you can really decide you know hey I want my business to support these things because these are important to you know these are important to me and it's part of you know important for the long-term strategy and so uh, you really get a chance to like give back and it also gives you the time flexibility to go and do those things so as a business owner you you can usually just pick up and go if you want to go and, and take part as a volunteer somewhere you can you can go do that and I think that's really great if you want to donate to you know you know your charities of choice you know whether it's you know helping children or helping the planet or whatever um, you can do those things and, and make that part of your, your sort of core. But one of the really great things about becoming your own, you know, owning your own business or becoming a tech contractor, I think really has to do with um, the ability to identify new opportunities uh, and to identify new business ways of doing business. And you can just go do it, um, which is really awesome. Uh, so, you know, an example for myself was, you know, I started tech contracting in the year 2000 and by, you know, 2005, 2006, I had started work on, on what was going to become a software as a service pro product that I ran for over 10 years with, uh, you know, billing, you know, uh, billing customers uh, just for, you know, per user billing which was a really cool side project because I thought that was a really neat thing. And so um, as a tech contractor or owning your own business, uh, you get to sort of have your, your long shot that you always, you know, work on as, a, you know, in conjunction with, you know, what you do, you know, for your daily, you know, your daily work. And so uh, you get to have more than one sort of outlet uh, to to you know make money from your talents or to grow your business uh, you know and hire other people um, there's lots of ways that it can go and uh, that flexibility I think is one of the key things that a lot of people like to have and you know going back to you know qualifying your customers uh, you get to choose what you work on and you know I think that's a really important thing too uh, because as a tech contractor, if you get onto a project that you, you know, you feel really doesn't fit you or the values of, you know, the project or the values of the team don't fit the direction that you're going or your own values, then you can just get off the project. And that sort of power over your own destiny is one thing that appeals to a lot of people. So in terms of tech contractor, you know, uh, you need to ask yourself some questions uh, before you become a tech contractor. You know, you got to ask yourself, am I the type of person, you know, who works on a problem obsessively, like a dog with a bone, um, until I get a solution and I just, you know, I can't stop myself until, until I get there? 
Um, that's really going to be somebody who is going to be good at problem solving and getting through those barriers um, that have to you have to get through as a as a contractor. You know where you know as an employee, in, your situation might be a lot more flexible. You know. Um, are you somebody who can give hard news without flinching? You know, uh, if you need to tell somebody that, you know, uh, what they're doing in terms of technology, they really can't do it that, that way. Um, and, you know, all the way to the top of the chain, you know, this is wrong. Um, you know, you have to do it a different way uh, because either you're, you know, you might be breaking laws or, you know, those kinds of things or you know or it could be that their uh, expectations are you know completely unrealistic and and if you know that if you're able to make a, de a determination on that uh, very early on which sometimes is very hard to see but if you can bring that news up early and you and you don't flinch then you're probably going to be okay are you someone who learns constantly who reads constantly, who looks up stuff online all the time. If you're that type of person, you know, when you're programming and you've got 17 tabs of Stack Overflow open and, you know, you're looking up all kinds of different um, technologies in order to solve a problem, um, then probably that's, you're going to be a good fit for being a tech contractor because it means that you, you're you definitely into your career and you're enjoying it and, uh, and, and that's something that is really great. Um, if you're somebody who strives to, you know, follow best practices and you're genuinely interested in, in, uh, in you know, getting your projects to that level where, you know, uh, it's following best practices and, and, uh, and has the best outcome for your customers. Um, if you love working with others, that's going to be great. Typically, if you're a complete introvert, um, I hate to say it, you might not make a good tech contractor, I could be wrong, uh, but you know, definitely tech contractors are people who uh, are, are out there. You've gotta have the soft skills, you've gotta be able to get in and do requirements and actually find out what people need as opposed to just sort of stopping on the first thing they tell you. Um, and you gotta be able to go and just walk into you know, CEO's offices and, and, and get the straight goods on what they want. Um, you know, that's kind of the type of person who's going to be really good at this kind of work. So if you have all those things and it looks, you know, you feel like you would be a good fit for being a contractor, um, then definitely there's going to be some rewards uh, for you. So if you're good at what you do and you can deliver, uh, you know, top quality product to your customers, you're definitely going to be making money. <clears throat> and so here's what you should expect. As a junior to intermediate developer in the data space, uh, you're going to be making between 40 to say $90 an hour uh, US. And uh, that's definitely what I see in the market, which means if you bill for the entire year, uh, you'll make six figures uh, in the first year that you do contracting, the first or second year that you do contracting, you'll be making over six figures. And from there, you know, it sort of goes up and it depends on your specialty and all kinds of things. You know, generally speaking, um, contractors uh, that are working in data that have sort of like an intermediate to senior, they're going to be uh, $100, $100 an hour and over. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are charging uh, more than that depending on their specialty. I've seen, you know, Oracle guys that are very specialized in Oracle we're charging you know four hundred dollars an hour um, and I've seen um, all kinds of guys I've seen um, you know you know SAP guys that are you know three thousand four thousand dollars a day uh, so if you get into the ERP space um, then you can definitely uh, you can be charging a little bit more especially if you've got that talent and you've got the uh, the experience to back it up and of course if you add some employees to your business because after all it is a business uh, then uh, then if you're able to make that work and you can get them billing as well or you can you know make you know you can contract them out 
to some of your customers or things like that, you can make even more money. Um, and so there's many ways that um, your tech contracting career can roll out and uh, no two uh, tech contracting companies are the same typically. So if you're looking for a really great lifestyle um, that can sort of give you a wide range of things that you want to do, uh, you know, and also give you a lot of challenge, um, you know, it's going to give you a lot of self-direction um, that you can just sort of do uh, the things that you think are important and you can add value in those ways, then I think tech contracting is one of the things that can really uh, be great for you. Um, it's also something where you can give back to your community um, and you can sort of, you know, fulfill a lot of your goals in your mission in life. And so, in conclusion, if you think that, you know, the things that I mentioned here today uh, sort of resonate with you and make sense to you, then maybe becoming a tech contractor is going to be the thing for you. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on tech contracting and how you might become a tech contractor. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet and uh, click the bell when you see the bell and uh, put any questions or comments you might have in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.